Hey folks, today we're going to highlight this beautiful TAC X1000R auto reverse reel to reel tape deck. So this one is uh, this one is in near mint condition, really incredible. The only thing of note to call out a little bit of uh, loss of the graphics um, uh, down in this area here. Um, I'm pretty certain that's a factory defect. There's no evidence of a scratch or abrasion. It's really, really nice deck. Catches the light beautifully. This has undergone the full 16-hour restoration um, that it, that's become standard for me on the X1000R. Um, involves almost full disassembly of the deck. Um, all the critical mechanical components are taken out. Um, you know, head stack, uh, your your wheel mounts, the full plate, the bottom plate. Um, even the control panel is taken out, disassembled, cleaned. Uh, all the pots and switches are um, uh, are addressed with deoxid uh, three times on each on each you know on each unit. So my goal is to really bring it back to uh, as close to that like new performances as you're going to find. And. Uh, this one functions flawlessly. It's it's really really wonderful, as well as sounding sounding just incredible. So a few things I like to go over with the X one thousand R. Some of the things that make it special. It's fairly late in the development of reel to reels from early to mid eighties. Um, by that time, it was really kind of the the end of the period for reel to reel at that point. Cassette decks are beginning to offer excellent performance. For instance, the Nakamichi. Uh, Dragon is introduced in 1982, and uh, cassette technology, really from the standpoint of form factor as well as convenience, um, pushed pushed out the reel to reel from consumer standpoint. Now reel to reel continued as a professional format, and uh, even to this day, it's it's uh, really loved from the standpoint of professional recording, which is great because there are brand new tape excellent quality tape available, really better than it, um, what you're going to find um, used, even if it's new old stock. And uh, so this is an example here, ATR Magnetics MDS 36. And I have several tapes by this company as well as um, RTM uh, recording the masters. So uh, it's auto reverse, so and it plays and records in both directions, not every auto reverse drip deck also records words in reverse. It does mean the uh, sound calibration is, is very extensive because everything that you do in forward from playback and record, uh, your frequency response, your bias, all those adjustments are done in reverse as well. But when it's done, it means it's, it's really the ultimate convenience in, in a reel-to-reel. -reel. Once you put your tape on, there's never a need to flip it until you get to the end. Next is uh, dual capstan and servo control of the tape path, including electronic braking. So, for instance, let's uh, go back to the beginning, search to zero feature. You'll see as it gets, gets to zero, it, it electronically breaks and slows down, and then finally it comes to a stop. That brings us to the other thing that I love, is the computer control and the real-time tape counter, which includes uh, two memory positions, the zero position where we're going now, as well as you get an additional cue position. So you notice one, th one thing I like about this feature very much is uh, when I'm forwarding or you know, rewinding the tape, I, I really, you know, it's nice not to have the tape fly off the, uh, the, uh, your take up spool and have to rethread it <clears throat> as I was spinning around and flapping around. So uh, I, I love this, this deck for this reason. So, I mean, for that alone, this, this is a phenomenal deck. So puts it a cut, of, well a cut above uh, really all consumer decks um, and, and most even, you know, kind of prosumer or professional decks uh, with, the, with the tape path and feature. The, so we hit the computer control. Um, you also have your cue position. I happen to set one. For instance, if I press set to cue and then press play, it will go to that point and then play. I had it in reverse play, so 
while it was while it's going to the position, it, it went ahead and changed the direction. I heard heard the solenoid click. Sound quality, yes, sound quality is phenomenal, and up there with the best of the real real effects. Um, especially what has been, especially number one when it's in this this level of condition and restoration. Uh, tape heads are, are in excellent condition, and that's proven by the frequency response uh, that I was able to achieve from this deck, which is well within the uh, manufacturer's specifications. So, let's go back to the beginning, um, and you can see the, you know, for instance, things like the uh, rewind forward speed, all of that's been set within the oscilloscope, so really nice and nice and fast. Um, I believe, well, you set it using an oscilloscope for a specific waveform, but at the end, what you end up achieving is uh, about 90 seconds on one, you know, 10 inch reel going from one end to another. So really moves along fast. Let's see. Um, so the, the restoration really includes, you know, probably the core of it is the, uh, the head stack, the cap stands, that whole mechanism. Um, I remove that. I re, you know, essentially rebuild it on on the bench, so it functions just just beautifully, and it's going to function beautifully for a long time. Um, the main problem with these decks uh, that makes them say not work is the uh, the linkages get gummed up with old grease over time, as well as the belt fails. Um, and I look for decks that are you know, excellent to mint in cosmetic condition and generally not working. So if somebody's already gone in and, you know, put in a new belt and, you know, sprayed WD-40 or whatever to get that linkage to work, I, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'd rather have one that uh, <clears throat> hasn't been touched because uh, I'm going to address all of that anyway. Even if someone put in a new belt, I don't know who made that belt is it going to get stretched out in six months so that belt goes in the trash and uh, um, regardless of the condition of the deck when I get it the restoration activities are really um, the same so that's why I like essentially you like to stop start with a deck that uh, really is is been kept well but uh, you know is no longer working and uh, is an excellent candidate for uh, to be restored so with that, uh, we saw a little bit of a demo, but we can, uh, maybe even hurts a little bit. Now, just a note where the demo doesn't really feature the sound quality because we're using my camera um, microphone, but this deck really has, uh, really does sound phenomenal. Um, just a, a note on the spec. So after the um, mechanical restoration, which then includes uh, the mechanical adjustments, your tape path, your your tape tension. Just a note: uh, if you're going to set tape ten, ten, tape tension on the stack, which is an essential step to do, you really need um, this tool. Just note on, on getting these because these do show up on eBay from time to time. Um, you want one with a scale no higher than 200 um, grams at the top. It's up around four or five hundred. You're you're looking the tensions you're you're looking to set. Are in the range of about 50 grams, um, and that's for mo most tape, tape decks. You're going to be in the range of 50 to 80 grams for playing. Uh, forward and rewind tensions might be up around 110. So you don't want something where you're setting, you're, you know, you're trying to set the things that are way down at the bottom of the scale. You're just not going to. It won't be convenient as well as not not as accurate. So you want to be about mid scale. Um, the other point is. These most of these and the good ones you'll see are the ones in good condition were made for VCRs in the 90s, so they're not as old, generally in really good condition. And then there's a calibration procedure uh, essentially, use the tape that you're going to run in your deck so a quarter inch, um, one mil tape, for example. You will use that um, to calibrate your, um, your meter and uh, it's a, it could be a little tricky uh, if you haven't done it before. Uh, but once you do that, then you're going to have uh, a meter in, in good condition that you can use for uh, calibrating your deck. And these come with a little weight to do the calibration. So if you do find one of these, try to get as good condition as you can. It doesn't matter if it's calibrated for VCR. 
make sure it has that weight and then do the calibration um, yourself or, or send me a note, I can help you out. Um, the other thing, just uh, from the standpoint of the frequency, because uh, I was about to get into the uh, tape path and the uh, wow and flutter, is you do need a couple MRL tapes. One is for your speed and your wow and flutter. The other one is for your uh, frequency response as well as your azimuth, which is the alignment of the tape heads. So these are all essential. Other than that, it's just normal stuff like uh, the oscilloscope, uh, frequency generator, and, and such. So at, at the end of the mechanical restoration as well as the mechanical alignment, which includes tape path, brake tension, and so forth, tension. Uh, this one came out to 0.032 um, wound flutter forward, 0.038% reverse, well within spec of 0.05%. So spec may even be 0.07, I'm not sure. But uh, so it, it, excellent. That, that just means the deck is in great condition and, and you did a nice job with your restoration. Um, then after the full uh, audio alignment, the playback frequency response, which is actually the more important one, is plus 1.9 dB, minus 1.5 dB, so well within the spec of plus minus 3. And um, the overall frequency response is actually, generally that's a little better than that because you can compensate in your, in your record for any deficiencies in your playback. That's why you want to make sure your playback frequency response, get that excellent first uh, before you start messing around with your uh, record. Um, with that, let's just see. Um, I think that's those are the main things. But let, let's do let's go ahead and do a uh, a record demo. So in order to record, there's kind of a safety switch record mode here, uh, so that you don't accidentally erase your deck or erase your tape. And the record button will flash. So make sure that's flashing. Um, Let's see, we are at zero. We did end up at, you know, basically went to zero. So then you hit record and pause at the same time. So click those. Let's see. You can press record first, then pause. That's generally what I do, so I don't hit pause first. Um, now, what happens then, and make sure that both of these are solid. If this is still blinking, then you didn't really uh, catch this button. And um, then you'll go through all your recording, and it won't be on the tape. So make sure this is... This is solid. This will also be solid. Now, I also I, I did set the levels and, and such. We can do um, put it into source, and I'll just play the source for a minute. I mean, my levels could go you know a little higher, especially with a modern tape like this. You can go you know higher than that. I usually end up around mid scale. So anyway, that is the. That is the source. Let me see if we can get that back to the beginning. This is a little tricky, tricky here. Okay. Now, so my source is queued back to the beginning. Levels, levels are set well enough. Um, we're in record mode. LH2 position. This deck has been calibrated for the LH2 position with this tape. Um, I also tweak, make sure I, you know, calibrate the bias in the EE position because some people still have some. Uh, you know, older tapes, the LH1 is like if you had old scotch tapes or something like that, um, scotch or other other kind of not, not high-end brands. So uh, LH2 is where you want to be most of the time. That's where this deck is calibrated and where you're going to get the best performance. Um, I usually use high speed. This deck sounds great at low speed as well, but, uh, you know, I'm using a 10-inch tape, I, I don't need six hours of music, three hours is, is actually fine for me. And uh, for, you know, forward and reverse on the tape. So let's, let's go ahead and get it started then. Now that we're armed for record, just press play. Let's get it back into the tape position. Press play. Which means now we're gonna be actually listening to the tape. So now we're listening to what's recorded on the tape. And, uh, all reel to reels are basically three head uh, decks. So, erase, record, and playback. Uh, this, this being an auto reverse 
with all functions in both directions means it has six heads. So reverse, it does the same thing, like I said, in reverse. But anyway, that's the, and I hit the button, put it into source. Essentially, it is the distinguisher from uh, what you can hear. So back to tape, and then if we want, I'll just hit search to zero and play that. To turn the source off. So let's show um, let's show one other thing. And uh, you know, I played that music for over ten seconds, so all my videos get copyright strike, strikes. Uh, there's not too much I could do about it other than, other than finding generic YouTube music to record. Um, let's, for your auto reverse, you can do have, you can play one side, you can have it auto reverse at the end, and that uses, um, you need a little foil sensor to put on the end of the tape to go from forward to reverse. Um, but then going from reverse back to forward, which is this position, um, and that, in that case, it will play basically in this loop, keep going back, back and forth. Uh, it uses the zero position of the meter. So if we play, press reverse play, we'll hear the other side of the tape. And then when it gets to zero, we'll go see what happens. So when you press reverse, the cap stands change direction. Dual cap stands, so, you know, again, from the tape tape's that standpoint, it doesn't get it. to zero and now it's going to reverse and go back to forward okay um, I'm trying to think of anything else uh, there's quite a bit more with this deck it has pitch control um, you saw the tape path how it slows down and, and know electromagnetic brakes and then stops um, tape monitor tape selection I think we hit most of the most of the key features um, a lot of other cool things with this deck I mean like a lot of vintage equipment you could you could use timers and stuff to set up for auto record or auto play I don't know how many people use those things uh, today probably not much um, kind of a cool kind of a little bit hidden feature if you press say forward or reverse forward then uh, if you lift, lift this up you can hear what's on the tape going fast when you let it go when you let it go it's setting the cue position so now if I set press set to cue it'll go to the position where I release that and the idea there is you're listening for say if you want to find the gap uh, you start a piece of music you're listening for that gap and then you, you let it go when you hear a gap. Um, but anyway, I, I pretty much just let it go randomly, so. That's what I'm doing. Notice we still have it armed for record. This is flashing. So just for you know safety's sake, if you usually you want to keep that off unless you're recording. That'll keep you, you know, from accidentally erasing your tapes. Um, Probably not something that's going to necessarily happen. You would have to press that button, as well as record play or record pause, pause then play. Um, but anyway, I'd, I uh, probably hit all the highlights, certainly, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I love these decks. I love working on these decks and, and talking about these decks. So um, it's been a pleasure for me, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.